The summer I was 17, my whole family was out of town visiting my grandmother, the one who was always free with the insults. Luckily, I had a very low-paying job that my parents had repeatedly told me I should be grateful for, so they happily left me behind. This one night, I was waiting for a friend to come over to play video games. It took a while for him to walk over. The houses in my area are far apart from one another. The only thing close by is a small park across the street that becomes dark and menacing at night. I'm telling you this to explain that there's no one around if you find yourself in trouble. Around 11 p.m., my friend called and urgently said, Open your door. Now. Someone is following me. We don't usually have problems with violence in our neighborhood. Still, occasionally, young kids try to steal things from those out alone on the streets. So I ran downstairs to open the door and peered outside. I see my friend entering my driveway and yanking the gate closed behind him. He rushed in and told me someone was following him, threatening him, saying, You're dead. I'm going to kill you, you son of a bitch. I looked around outside for 10, 20, 30 seconds, but nothing happened. Then the motion light turned on, and I saw a huge, tall, fat man running into my driveway, closing the gate behind him as if he knew exactly what he was doing. I quickly slammed the door shut, waiting for him to try to open it. A few seconds later, the man slammed his body against him as hard as he could, yelling, You're dead, motherfucker. I'm going to kill you. He continued to slam against the door repeatedly. We ran upstairs and locked the bedroom door behind us before barricading ourselves in my room, where I called the police. I explained what was happening, and the officer could hear the man destroying my front door over the phone. I begged them to hurry. My friend and I were terrified not knowing who this man was or what this crazy lunatic wanted. We managed to find a couple baseball bats to defend ourselves and stood in the middle of my room, waiting. If he could destroy my front door, the other doors would barely withstand a single blow. For five minutes, the banging continued, and then suddenly, everything went silent. I couldn't see the front door from my room, so I couldn't see him. The only thing I noticed was the motion lights turning on and off all the way around the house for another ten minutes. After that, it was dark and silent, but I felt sure the man was still there because there was only one way out of my yard that I could see. He never passed back through the front gate. We feared that he'd gotten into the house somehow. After about 40 minutes, during which we paced around my room in sheer terror, we were relieved to see the police lights outside. Yet the creepiest part was about to come. Five armed policemen wearing bulletproof vests approached the front door. I yelled from my window. I don't know where the guy is anymore. He might be in the house. Three of them checked the backyard while the other two approached the still locked front door. Five minutes later, the officers in the back had entered the house and opened the door from the inside for the others. They told us to stay locked in my room because they'd found a broken window. The man might definitely be in the house. It took another 10 minutes to find him, hiding in the upstairs bathroom closet, just like in the movies. They arrested him after a brief struggle. The man was incredibly drunk and had no idea where he was or what he was doing. He said he was just hiding because he was scared. I don't ever want to know what could have possibly scared that raging giant of a man, even if it was imaginary. All I know is, from then on out, I opted for unemployment and grandma's insults. I still can't believe what happened that night. Even now, it freaks me out just thinking about it. The night started off normal enough. I was in high school at the time, my junior year. My parents had gone out to some event, a dinner or a concert, or maybe both. That part, I don't remember. What I do remember is staying home and working on a school paper that was due the following day. I was one of those students who waited until the last moment to study for an exam or write a paper. Anyway, I planned on spending the whole night at my desk in my room. My desk was opposite the door, facing the wall, with a window next to me. While working, I wore these fabulous headphones that I had gotten for my birthday, which are also noise-canceling. 
my parents left the house around 6 p.m. The whole time they were gone, I sat at my desk, blasting music through my headphones and writing my paper. Occasionally, I would take breaks and watch the rain and lightning outside my window. We lived in Austin at the time, and there was a big storm that night, but I never left my desk. It was nearing 11 p.m. I had just taken off my headphones minutes earlier when I heard the familiar sound of the garage opening and my parents coming into the house. Suddenly, I heard my mother shout my name. Jen, she screamed. What on earth happened here? Confused and slightly scared, I left my chair and hurried through the house towards them. With my mother freaking out like that, I paid little attention to the hallway I was running down. For the rest of the house, I was flying past. When I got to her, my mother was livid with anger. She was pointing at the carpet, yelling, Was this you? Did you have friends over while we were gone? I looked down to see the carpet covered by a trail of muddy footprints. I frantically explained to her that I had no idea how those got there and that I had spent the whole night at my desk working on my paper. I watched as her face went from anger to confusion to fear. We realized that someone else must have entered the house. Quickly, we scanned the footprints, trying to make sense of the situation. It only took us a few moments to figure out where they started. Our back door, which we usually leave unlocked. A horrifying realization dawned on us. The footprints started at the back door, but no footprints led back out. Suddenly, a thunderous pounding echoed through the house. Then the front door was flung open and banged shut with a violent slam. We all ran into the garage. Mom dialed 911 and started shouting at the police through the phone. Please come quickly, someone's broken into our house. After what seemed like hours, the police arrived. An officer stayed with us in the garage as his partner entered the house and searched it room by room. His partner told us that it was safe to go back in, that there was no one in the house. Then he asked us a question. Whose room was down the hall to the left? My parents looked at me, and I told the officer it was mine. Then he asked us to follow him. As we made our way back towards my room, it was now easy to see the footprints weave through my house. Like breadcrumbs, we tracked them from the back door, through the living room, down the small hallway, into my parents' room, and then turned toward my room. They stopped in my doorway. The officer then pointed at my door, which I had left open all night. On it, in black sharpie, was written the following. My log. 8.36. I see you. 8.43, you forgot to lock the back door. 8.52, you seem focused. 9.20, turn around. 9.42, look at me. 10.12, look at me. 10.31, look at me. 10.49, look at me. For nearly two hours, Someone stood in my doorway watching me. To this day, I shudder to think about what would have happened if I had ever turned around. Usually you think of your parents' house as a comfort zone, a safe place from all the crazy stuff that happens in the world. That's how I thought of it anyway. That is until this one night. It's funny how just one night can change things forever. I was 17 years old, in high school, and living at home with my parents. 
In my bedroom, next to the bed, was this large storage closet. It wasn't a normal closet with a doorknob or anything. Instead, it was this medium-sized square piece of plywood paneling that fit into a door jamb. You had to grab it by the edges and pull it out to open it. My parents kept stuff in there you'd use, but only sometimes. Things like suitcases, Christmas ornaments, boxes of old toys, stuff like that. One night I'd gone to sleep and woke up in the morning to find that the door was open and leaning against my bed. This wasn't that weird, as it happened every once in a while. After all, there were no hinges or anything holding the door on. Anyway, I pushed the door back into the wall and got ready for school. I didn't think much about it. The following night I was woken up around 3 a.m. by some noise. I wasn't sure what it was, so I sat up, looked around my room, and noticed the paneling had fallen open and was leaning against my bed again. My first thought was that it had loosened up from use, so the door wasn't fitting as tightly as it used to. I left it the way it had fallen and decided to try to fix it in the morning. On the third night I had trouble falling asleep. Exams were coming up and I was stressed out about it. I'd been tossing and turning for a few hours, but sleep wouldn't come. That's when I heard this loud thump and knew exactly what it was. I leaned up and sure enough the door had fallen open again. I could even see into the dark void of the closet. I went ahead and left it open and tried again to get to sleep. That's when I heard what sounded like a paper bag being crunched up. The same noise you'd make when you pulled your McDonald's hamburger out of the bag, crumpled it up, and tossed it into the trash. But I hadn't been to McDonald's, and there was nothing at all that I could think of that could be making that noise. I hesitantly reached over, flipped on the light next to my bed, and looked into the open closet. My worst nightmare was coming true as I stared into the face of a man inside peering out at me. Almost immediately the face disappeared back into the darkness of the closet. But it was enough. I knew what I saw and let out a blood-curdling scream. It was so loud and startling that my dad rushed into my room in just a few seconds. I was still lying in bed, almost paralyzed with fear. It was every kid's worst nightmare, a boogeyman hiding in your room. Only I wasn't a kid anymore, and this was real. I pointed to the closet and screamed that there was someone inside. My dad looked at me like I was nuts or something, like maybe I'd had a bad dream. But he got down on his knees and took a look inside. I got up and stood behind him as he crawled all the way in. He came out a few seconds later and told me there was no one in there. I thought that was impossible, but I also started to doubt myself. Maybe I was just stressed out, and I'd imagined it. I mean, I even stuck my head in there myself and didn't see anything. Still, the whole thing was just too unnerving to go back to sleep in that room, so instead, I went into my parents' room. I was lying on the floor next to their bed, still worrying about the closet, my exams, and whether I was losing my mind, when I heard what sounded like my bedroom door opening. Almost immediately, I heard footsteps running down the hall, down the stairs, and out the front door as it slammed shut in their wake. Of course, my parents heard it as well. There was no doubt what was happening. My dad and I ran down the stairs, but whoever that was, they were long gone. We later found out they had been hiding inside an empty storage container inside the closet. The fast food wrapper I thought I'd heard had been left behind. Fortunately, I graduated high school that year, moved out, and started college in the fall. First thing I did was take all the doors off the dorm room closets. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.